Hello everyone. Uh, while looking around the internet about Cocos 2DX, I noticed that most people who develop for Android platforms use Eclipse. Today I will show how to import a Cocos 2DX project into Android Studio if you wish instead. I will first show where to get everything that's needed to set up Cocos 2DX, how to create a package, and then finally how to import the project. If all you care about is how to import the project into Android Studio, I will have notes in the description on where to skip ahead in this video. Now, for Cocos 2DX, we need three additional things. We need the Android SDK, the Android NDK, and Apache Ant. So, in no particular order, we want to download the latest version of Android Studio. All these steps that I'm going to show here, I've already done. I've already um, downloaded and installed the latest versions of everything. The nice thing about Android Studio is that not only does it already come packaged with the SDK, but in addition with uh, the newest updates, you can now store the SDK outside of the Android pa application package. So, because of this, we no longer need to create symbolic links so that the SDK can be used by other programs. And then here we want to download the latest version of Cocos 2DX, which is version 3.3 right now. And then we want the latest version of NDK, which is here is R10D. The reason why I say R10D instead of R9D, I'll explain in a moment. And then finally you want to download the latest version of Apache Ant, which you can see here. And so now I'll show that I've downloaded everything and put everything in applications. Um, now the reason why you don't need R9D in the old versions of Cocos 2DX that was necessary because the latest versions would have problems. That has been fixed in the newest version of Cocos 2DX, so you can download the latest version of the NDK safely. So now that I have everything here, let's open up the terminal. Okay. And first we want to change directory to Cocos 2DX. I'll drag that in here. Then next we want to do with the setup. I have already done this in advance, but essentially what happens is if there are missing environment variables, it will ask you what you want to set. And so say for NDK root, it'll ask where the NDK is stored and all you really need to do, the simplest way is just drag and drop the folders into the terminal and it'll add the absolute path for you. As you saw when I changed directories. And then after you've done that, you'll see this message, please execute this command, which this will be based on your username. So in my case, I would type the following. And in your case, you would just use your username right here instead. And then when you hit enter, this will update um, the changes you've made to the environment variables and if you run setup again you should see all the correct paths assuming you've set up everything correctly. Now that that is done we want to create a new project so to do that you just type the following Cocos new then our project name which I'll just call example project then we want to define our package name, which I'll just call as an example com.example.importing.cocos2dx.android.studio. And of course, you would just use whatever package name, whatever unique package name you want to use here. Now, for language, I will be going over CPP, C++, and now I want to define what directory to save it at. This is just an example, so I'll just save it on 
the desktop for convenience. And you can see it finished very quickly. You can see the example project was just created over here in the corner. And now we want to navigate to it. So I will change directory again. Now, normally at this point when building for Android, you would navigate to the Android project and you would run the build native Python script. However, um, as the script mentions now, this method of building Android applications will be removed in the next version of Cocos 2DX. So instead, I will use the recommended method. So to do that, you just type Cocos compile, and our target platform is Android. And this will take a few minutes. But while that's going, I will say, while I do know how to import Coco Studio X projects into Android Studio, I do not know how to set up those projects to build using Gradle building. And more importantly, how to include the C++ code files into the project. If anyone knows how to do this, um, feel free to leave a comment and, and, and lend a helping hand to other developers. And you can see that sometimes there are warnings that pop up. This is just how Cocos 2DX is designed. You can feel free to ignore them. And now you see that the build was successful. And another thing you may notice is that this new version of Cocos 2DX will also create the APK. So. Uh, in reality, we don't even have to do the import. We can just do we can just do Cocos Run Platform Android. However, the purpose of this tutorial is to show how you can import your project into Android Studio so that you can use that as your IDE for the Java code. So I will not do this step here. Instead, I'm done with the terminal. And now I will open Android Studio. Now the first time you run Android Studio, you may encounter a setup wizard, which will help you set up where the SDK is stored as well as other settings. It's very self-explanatory, so I won't cover it here. Uh, instead, I'll go straight into importing. We want to choose this option. And then it's already selected here, but you would navigate to your base project folder. This is the folder you want. You don't want to select the project on Android. You want the base folder. So I have that selected, so I'll choose OK. And now we want to create project from existing sources. And click Next. Here's where you would name your file. We already specified the location, so we'll click Next. And now the next thing you want to do is uncheck everything. We only want to include four folders. The platform Android Java folder, its source folder, as well as our two project folders. Uh, you do not need to include the, the gen folders. Those are generated folders. You don't have to worry about that. Now here, Add plugins at your discretion. Some plugins include the same libraries, so if you include both plugins, then you will get a conflict when building, so do so at your own risk. For now, I'll just leave everything unchecked. Then I'll click Next. Um, and this is where you can confirm your project setup. This is exactly what we want. We have one folder for the base, uh, Cocos 2DX libraries and one for our project. And next you choose the API platform you want to build for. I'm going to choose API 21. 
and then you see it detects Android manifest files. Uh, this default is OK, so we'll just click Finish. And now nothing's open here, but if you need to, you can open like app activity and modify it however you want. However, I'm just going to show the base uh, functionality working. So, first thing I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to go to run. And I'm going to edit configurations. And I'm going to say show chooser dialog. Unless you want to specifically use a particular emulator all the time, this will allow you to uh, change up which emulator you want to use or if you want to use the device you have connected. But you can do whatever you want. This is just what I usually do. Now we're going to run. And I actually already have an emulator open right now. And it's going to take some time because it's building. You see that's the emulator. But for a moment, I'm going to show you what it is. Um, the emulator I'm using, make sure the CPU is ARM. So I'm going to select the one I have running and click OK. Let's bring that up. Now the emulator is strange because it didn't flip the window, but as you can see, our program ran perfectly, no issues at all. And that's how you import a Coco Studio X project into Android Studio. If you have any other questions or you have uh, any ideas on improvements and like to help other developers, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.